For this video, I thought it will be really interesting to illustrate one of the most important aspects of Dataverse plugin development, and that aspect is transactions. Now, regardless of whether you're just starting with Dataverse plugin development or you're a seasoned developer, high chances are that you have already used certain aspects of this feature in one way or another. So my goal here today is to introduce some clarity and illustration on how Dataverse transactions work and how one can benefit from them in their next Dataverse project. But just before we go straight into writing code, let me tell you a story that might confuse you even further. For a brief moment, let's imagine a pizza place where employees for some particular reason are making pizza in an assembly line. In our assembly line, one employee is responsible for the pizza base, the second one for the sauce, third one for the toppings, and the last one for the cheese. So our first employee did a great job in making a pizza base, and he passed it on to his colleague to apply the sauce. Everything went smooth with the sauce guy as well. Seeing a perfectly round dough, he applied just the correct amount of sauce onto it and then passed it on to the next guy. Now when the moment of shine came to the third employee, he made a terrible mistake and with toppings he also added few slices of pineapple onto the pizza. This catastrophe of a pizza would have reached the oven if not for our cheese guy. It so happens that pineapples on pizza is something that goes against everything that our last employee holds dear in this world. Hence, he didn't allow this horrible mistake to happen and stop the whole process where it stood, sending it back to the pizza base guy to start all over again. Now, most probably my vivid storytelling gave you no clue on what Dataverse transactions actually are. So before we go into an example, let me give you a brief explanation. In short, when we say that Dataverse plugin executes within transaction, we assume that plugin is running on all or nothing principle. For example, if a single plugin or a chain of plugins are executing many create, delete or update operations, being in transaction requires that all of these operations either succeed or fail as a unit. This means that if one action is successful, then all other actions must be successful as well. Otherwise, plugin will roll back all the operations. Finally, we can go to the code and check the actual example and see how it works. So as you can already see, I have already prepared a couple of plugins for this demo, one of which is registered under the account entity in a synchronous manner for pre-operation and the other one is for contact on post operation. So let me first explain the logic behind our account entity plugin. In here, we are triggering this plugin, which is synchronous uh, pre-operation plugin every time telephone one value changes. And after this value changes, first of all, we're updating attribute called phone updated to true for the account. Later on, we're fetching all contacts that are under this account, which uh, contains this parent-child relationship. And then we're looping through each and every one of those contacts and then assigning those contacts with the same telephone one value as the one that we uh, assigned to the account when we triggered this plugin. And that's basically it. There is nothing more to it. And this is just the demo logic. I wouldn't see it being applied for any real business case scenario. So keep that in mind. And now we can jump into our contact plugin logic. So as you can see, our contact plugin logic is way more simple than account. We're just actually throwing an exception every time contact plugin is being triggered. And we're just saying this is an error message, please go away. Now again, this is a demo. Uh, we could actually implement way more logic and check if certain values updated in a certain way that would you know, break uh, or be not compliant with business logic. And in this particular case, just to make a point, uh, we're then throwing an exception every time this plugin is being executed. This could already give you a hint of what will happen with the account update that we're doing in the beginning. Uh, because if I would go back into our account logic, we will see that uh, we're assigning phone updated value with true. And since this will be a chain of plugin executions in transaction, we can already assume that this phone updated value will not be actually changed into true. So let's see how that works uh, in action in Dataverse. 
So I have already opened one of the account forms in my Dataverse environment and I will try now to change the phone number of this account. So I will delete a few digits and try to save it. And as you can see, our contact plugin returned as an error saying that this is an error message, please go away. And if I close this dialog box, I will see that my form is not yet saved, meaning the entity is not yet saved and the changes were not pushed to the database. And if I go back, I can discard the changes and I will see that my uh, actual phone number hasn't been changed. So this is actually transactions in action, but not intended. And this is how it works. But now let's see what happens if we change our contact plugin to be asynchronous. So here I am back at my account form with the plugin currently changed from pre-operation synchronous plugin to post-operation asynchronous plugin. And now if I try to change my phone number and save the form, I will see that it will save without a problem. And that is because our plugin is now working not in a transaction, meaning that regardless of the fact that our contact uh, plugin will return an error, this will not be represented in our account form and our account plugin execution. So this is how transactions are working in a nutshell. But there is one more additional topic that I wanted to discuss. Now, this other topic that I wanted to discuss is called exclusive locking. And I wanted to show you how our transactions of plugins can create exclusive locks onto certain entities and how those locks can temper with our plugin performance. To give you a demonstration, I will include a sleeping statement into our code, meaning that after retrieve multiple uh, method is executed, we will wait for 30 seconds until we uh, finish off with our plugin logic uh, in for each statement. So let me build the solution, deploy it into our model driven apps, and let's see how that works in action. So once again, I'm back at my form. Currently, again, I changed my plugin from post-operation asynchronous one to synchronous pre-operation because we want to show exclusive locking in terms of uh, plugin transactions. And in here, uh, I will now try to change my phone number again. And as you can remember, we added 30 seconds sleeping statement. So if I will try to change my phone number, the plugin will start executing and it will take 30 seconds to do so. But more interestingly, if I go and open another window of account and if I will try, for example, to change my website and say save, I will see that this one will go into waiting as well. And this is what we call exclusive locking. Since one transaction is already in place, other uh, transactions need to wait until the first one is finished before they can alter our database again. And now you can see that only after our first transaction finished off with changing phone number, only then we could update the website. And now you can see how this can temper with our performance of the system. If you have a lot of logic in your synchronous transactions, then it means that all other updates for that particular entity will have to stand in line and wait until the first one is finished. So this is more or less everything that I wanted to share with you this time. And I guess the moral of the story is that uh, plugin transactions is a really great powerful tool that can ensure the data consistency in your system and whatnot. But as with many great things, you need to be very cautious with these synchronous plugins in your uh, solutions because they can tamper with the performance of the system quite a bit. So if you watched all the video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up, uh, maybe subscribe to the channel or leave the comment below if you have any additional questions. As always, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.